Thank you very much, Dr. Pilar. Any questions from the audience? Yes, Professor Tsivoni. The microphone. Just want to make the remark that we serve here endothelial function, healthy food. Yeah. Uh, I would like to, for, from this lecture I learned that endothelial dysfunction is variable during the same day. It you is. have a different threshold in the morning mm -hmm. and in the evening. Mm. Are there any uh, studies to show that patients with acute coronary syndrome, they have worse endothelial uh, function compared to, let's say, three months later or three months earlier? Do we have any data to show that dynamic changes in endothelial function play a role in acute coronary syndrome? The question is there for... Yeah, it's not for you. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> we have experience and we publish this in uh, normal volunteers, not with patients with uh, heart disease, but uh, normal uh, volunteers early in the morning when we wake them up at 6 a.m., they have a much better, much worse endothelial dysfunction than if we measure the endothelial, the same endothelial, the same patients after 10 a.m. And even as our publication also with normal volunteers without coronary disease, that early in the morning they have endothelial dysfunction or less endothelial function than in the evening. I don't know about the patients with coronary disease. What is the best time of the day in terms of your endothelial function? Usually we uh, assess them at about uh, 7 uh, a.m. in the morning. This is the best. 7 and 8? 7 in the morning, 7 a.m. It should be said that food, that uh, food. affects, uh, affects yeah. uh, the measure. Smoking affects the measure. So it, it needs to be measured in the same uh, uh, conditions and usually after at least uh, three hours of fasting. So early in the morning is probably the best. Uh, and the tiller function is uh, very f fluctuative. It changes all the time. Please. It, uh, it uh, correlates with blood pressure, but uh, it's not the only factor. If we examine a nutrient function in a patient at 8 o'clock today and at 8 o'clock tomorrow, uh, their blood pressure will be different and the nutrient function will be different. Uh, we know that blood pressure is the highest in the early morning hours. It's lower, significantly lower in the afternoon. And the uh, endothelial function correlates. Now, it is questioned whether the blood pressure itself affects endothelial function or it's a surrogate endpoint because when blood pressure is higher in the morning, catecholamine levels are higher, angiotensin levels are higher, and the elevation of those factors affect uh, endothelial function. So uh, one of the main problems is to create measurements that will reflect, will have a value as a measurement, and we can uh, get different results in different periods of time. And uh, it's really a problem of standardization. Baseline levels should be very well defined. OK. Thank you for this remark. Um, any more questions? Maybe I can ask Gira one question. Gira, there was a study in circulation from Colombia by Yelitz mm -hmm. who showed that many diabetics who were not suspected of having obstructive sleep apnea in fact had it, and they had endothelial dysfunction more than the other diabetics who didn't have obstructive sleep apnea. So. How do, you, how do you view diabetics in terms of screening for obstructive sleep apnea? And tell us about some of your criteria for screening patients for looking for OSA. Well, I think it's a complex uh, relationship. I agree with you. Uh, uh, it's not only that, that circulation paper. Uh, others showed it uh, as well. And, uh, and Amir just said that, uh, that he thought that, that endothelial function can be a marker of sleep apnea. I think it's... it's 
diabetes, hypertension, and, and a lot. Uh, and sleep apnea is another uh, risk factor. I cannot uh, tell you how to, how to put everything together in one, in one uh, package. Uh, um, I think, uh, I think uh, sleep apnea should be a word and uh, recognized as a substantial risk factor. All the data shows it. Um, and diabetes should be uh, recognized as an independent, although they do de depend on each other, but it, it is an independent uh, risk factor. I don't know if I answered your question, but... Uh, My, okay. you ask. I, I have actually a comment to all the speakers and to the company. From arrhythmia, studying that you're not enough to have a rhythm strip, you need a halter. From blood pressure uh, um, uh, management, we learned that you need uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitor from what you learn from endothelial endo <clears throat> sensitivity you learn that you need to have a halter like device that will measure the endo endothelial reactivity several times during the day and then you can know what it means yeah. I, I have a question uh, I have a question to Amir or Mickey or Peter about uh, the value of um, endopath in monitoring uh, complex uh, therapeutics. For example, if you have a patient who receives um, cardiotoxic uh, or uh, chemo uh, therapeutic agents for uh, cancer, biologic agents for um, autoimmune disease or for cancer as well. Um, do you know whether this can be used in order to monitor, in order to change algorithm, in order to provide some alarms uh, during the course of the treatment? Um, Mir. It's a good, it's a great question and uh, we, like other centers, start having uh, something called cardio-oncology clinic, where we actually have a combination of oncologists and cardiologists, because most of the patients with cancer now are actually surviving the cancer and die from cardiovascular disease. Uh, there are several drugs that have vascular toxicity. Majority of them have cardiac toxicity, but a lot of them have vascular toxicity. Uh, particularly uh, breast cancer women with aromatase inhibitors, they, they have a strong vascular toxicity. We do use it in our cardio-oncology to follow this patient. They are coming every seven months or six months for echo, and we do add it as an indicator for vascular toxicity. We have a similar thing with a patient getting 5-FU. We see the similar effect, and we sometimes, in some, some physicians actually are adding statin when they see endothelial dysfunction. Uh, in this patient, although their cholesterol is level normal, you can add low level, uh, low dose uh, uh, simvastatin, like 10 milligram, not as a cholesterol lowering, but as a vascular protector. So the answer is yes, we use it, and uh, we, we react upon that. Now, regarding some of the questions here, I think the, the, the message is that, that endothelial dysfunction is just give you a, a, a wake up call that something is wrong. And I think that you need to react on that, that you're missing some uh, risk. Uh, the patient is still vulnerable. One area that we are actually pursuing with other groups is the, uh, uh, back to the arrhythmia with a, a patient with an atrophy relation. The presence of uh, paroxysmal and atrophy relation is, a, um, mar is associated with endothelial dysfunction. So it reflects some vulnerability that we are missing something. Are there any further questions? I agree with Zamir. We also demonstrate, we also show this in our clinic, patients with, on, on chemo that the, the, the endothelial function is blunted and after a while, and we, as, as we, uh, we are very familiar with this, we load them not just with statins but with magnesium and improving uh, uh, the endothelial function. And also, by the way, also the, the, the LV function and, and improving the, the general function. Thank well, you, Mickey. Are there any other questions from the audience? So, I think that uh, we are going to conclude uh, the scientific part of the session, but the culinary part is continuing without interruption. Uh, I would like to thank uh, again Itamar Medical, 
the sponsors uh, and the organizers of this session. Uh, I think it was a great session. And obviously the speakers, all three of them, did a great job. And for you, the audience, uh, have a great continued uh, Israeli heart meeting until the end. Thank you very much. And Thank you. And uh, be, be aware of your endothelial function. It is very, very important.